Hey guys, it is Princess Educator, and today I'll be coming you guys with a part two of Child Care for Beginners um, part two video. So in part one, I gave you guys like the introduction of child care tips. In this video, you have gotten the job, blah, 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 you have been hired, so you need some tips of what to do. And this is the video for you. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so number one, I pretty much said this in the last video, but I'm going to say it again. Pack a good lunch. So you would like to make sure that the uh, place that you're working at has a microwave. If they do not have a microwave, you need to bring a cold lunch. Okay, so whatever that cold lunch that you like, salads, whatever, go ahead and pack that in your lunch. Um, now, if they do provide a microwave for the staff or in general, you can bring your favorite meals like spaghetti, alfredo. Ugh, I'm hungry already. So you you know that they have a microwave that you can use. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and pack a good lunch. Um, and also, you can go ahead and pack, have your breakfast ready inside of your lunch bag. So in the morning time, you're not fronting around. Oh, I need you know, you have it in your bag already. So pack your lunch the day before. Okay, not the day of, the day before. Um, so yes, you want to be prepared. Have that ready. Um, number two. Number two. So this is um so this tip right here is ask question and observe what is going on inside of the classroom. So usually if it is, if this is your first time, because this is what this video is about, um, your first day, normally if you're in the classroom, there's another teacher that's in there and she's just, you know, running her classroom, just showing you how they do things. So, um, you're going to make sure you're paying attention of how she interacts with the kids, how she talks to them, um, how she reads the book during story time, the transitioning um, tricks that she has. So, you would like to pay attention of how she runs her classroom. Um, and you kind of want to imitate that. You can, of course, be yourself. Um, things like that as well, but you will like to provide I don't want to say dominance around because I don't like that word, but you want to have structure inside of your class um, So yeah, so pay attention observe take note take mental notes Okay, for example when the kids come in she, she says good morning to them. Okay, good morning Make sure you say good morning. I'll put up their belongings ask them. What's their name? You know things like that. So you want to make sure that you are copying everything that teacher is doing and, and how the schedule is ran inside that class. Don't wait. Jump in. What I mean by that is you do not want to be seen as a parent or a another student inside the classroom. And you're probably like, what do you mean by that? Like, what do you mean another student inside the classroom? I mean... For example, I know a lot of teachers probably uh, understand this, but let's just say if you have a child that goes to a daycare center and you see Bobby, Hill, and Billy. So you go up to the teacher and say, oh, Bobby and B Billy just hit each other. The teacher is going to look at you like this. And the reason why she's doing that because you are so, you're also a teacher as well. And she doesn't want to feel like you are depending on her to handle the classroom because this is also your job as well. She wants to see how you can handle it. So you're going to have to redirect that child, okay? So if they're fighting, you need to redirect those children. If you see a child about to bite, doing this, like they have their mouth reaching to another child, you probably have to move that child away, you know, physical, uh, physically redirect them or tell them to, you know, play with something else. Hey, uh, let's play with this block. You see this green block? You know, you kind of have to have your distractions. So when you are hired as an employee, you have to act like a teacher. You, you are a teacher. You have to take that role, not like a parent will do or another student. You know how students will tell you, so-and-so did this. You're a teacher now. You know, so you have to, you have to redirect that child. 
Um, so yes, you got now you can ask for help, but since you're watching this video, I'm gonna give you guys redirection tips as well, what to do, so you guys can take those notes and apply it to your classroom. So I am here to help to help you. So here are some redirection um, tips. I'm kind of giving you guys more than 10, 10 tips in this video, but here are some redirection tips. So if Billy is biting Johnny, okay, is about to bite Johnny, you see his mouth open or he's getting aggressive or he's about to hit someone, sometimes you have to physically put their hand down. Now you want to do it like this. Oh no, we do not throw our blocks. We stack with our blocks. Let me see you stack your blocks. That's also a form of, I call it a, di a distraction, redirection. Um, so you would like to redirect them. So redirection comes in many different forms. It can be physically, verbally, non-verbal, things like that. So that. So you have verbally said what you want. Oh, you gave them a verbal um, distraction you told them what is accepted you gave them a clear expectations if you see Billy is about to bite or hit oh we do not bite our friends kind of need to move them so they won't bite that student move them away okay move them away we do not bite our friends we only bite apples he's not an apple sometimes I'd be a little silly with it I'll say just because he's wearing red I know this just because he's wearing red does not mean he's an apple. You know, some of them may laugh at that. But, <laughs> of course, that I don't say that. But, you know, say it like that. We're not eating. We only bite food. We only bite apples. We only play with our friends. But look, look at that red block. I'll reach for that block. Let me see you build a house. I love to say, let's build a house. Okay, especially with the blocks. So, they'll build a house. Now that child has completely forgot why they're upset okay he completely forgot why he's upset why he decided to bite that child sometimes they just sometimes a blink of an eye they're just mad okay so you're you're distracting them okay you're building blocks with them you're showing how to play with the blocks if he's about to throw a block at someone or if he's about to bite distract them with some type of activity where there is another block or another toy you have to use your resources resources so we will stack a block together i probably do that like one minute we'll just play let me see you do it and you know whatever so they'll come now then you can go on you know to something else so that is a redirection tip um, technique that i have been using for years and it's so simple you'll be like that ain't gonna work but i'm telling you it will work i'm telling you i have dealt with a lot of kids at once so um that had behavior issues i'm telling you it'll work now I wanted to give a little bit more details about the redirection um, technique. Um, you can give them a um, verbal, verbal. Sometimes you have to physical, um, like move them away if they're trying to hit someone. Um, and sometimes they will attention seek if that makes sense. So sometimes you have to ignore the behavior as long as it is not a violent, violent, physically violent situation if they're not trying to um hit someone um bring this then you can probably ignore it sometimes they just want to whine now if they're keep doing that more than i'll say more than one minute sometimes they just need a hug so you know hug them just a little bit um i have students even the older ones they like to be hugged um they like to be around you like they just like to be around you they will follow you around the whole classroom and yeah so <laughs> so you have to be um uh, aware of that so yeah so that is pretty much my redirection technique um sometimes you have to dis dis distract them which we already mentioned sometimes you have to you know set a stern um expectation we do not buy it now if they're doing this over and over sometimes you have to give them a break i say give them the break instead of timeout but it's the same thing um now if you're going to put them in timeout if they're two years old so if they're two years old they stay in timeout or in that area 
for two minutes. So two years old equal two minutes, if that makes sense. So you're going to go by their age. All right, so let's go ahead to the next uh, tip, y'all. Y'all distract me, but I had to tell you guys that because you got the job and you need to know. All right, so the next tip, you want to follow the schedule. You would like to keep a consistent routine. So in most um, centers, they already have a schedule that's already posted on the wall. You would like to make sure that you know what to do at this time. So um, yeah, so pay attention. At, from 8 o'clock to 8.30, free play. Okay, so you're like, okay, then at 9 o'clock, so if it's 8 o'clock to 8.30, um, the schedules that um, that that I have, I kind of built in the transition time, but depending on your school, it may be different. So if it says 8 o'clock to 8.30, free play, and 8.30 to um, 8 to 8.45, arts and crafts. So that means five or ten minutes before you guys announce you transition you would like to give those kids a verbal warning all right guys in ten minutes we're going to clean up okay after after five minutes have passed by give them another five minute warning okay then after that five minutes up you can have play a song or flicker the lights whatever you need to do you want to have a consistent schedule or technique or method to get that class to know what to do before so when they see those flickering lights okay and you'll say all right guys clean up they'll start cleaning up and doing things like that so if you just do it like a minute before they're going to be whining like uh uh like hold up lady you know <laughs> That's when you're going to have all these behavior outbursts. So you would like to give them those warnings ahead of time. All right, number eight, you would like to pick your battles and avoid power struggles. So, for example, I know that, you know, some of us grew up in a time where it's like, I'm wrong, you have to listen to me, which I kind of agree to a certain extent. Um, I like to give them options. Um, I don't know if I said that about the redirection thing, but that goes with redirection. Sometimes you have to give them a choice. So if you have a student who is, I don't want to bring up the hitting thing, but because it's, it's reality in our, um, our field. If they are hitting someone, give them that warning, follow those techniques that I told you. But they keep doing it. Now, if you if you're going to keep um, hitting your friends, you're going to come over here. Okay, so with that power struggle, you do need to have power and order inside your classroom, but it don't need to be like it's that type of way if that makes sense. So it can't be like a punch type of way. But they all know, okay, if I keep hitting, I don't want to go over here and read books. A lot of them do like to read books. But I'm just saying, I don't want to be here and not play with my friends. I would like to play with this truck. I would like to play with my friend Trevor. I would like to, you know, color. I would like to play with the Play-Doh. So I don't want to go over there, you know, be by myself. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to stop what I'm doing. Majority of the time when they hear that, they will stop. No matter the age. I've had two girls. If I told you guys how many two girls I had in the classroom at once before, you'll be like, really? Yeah. So, I'm telling you this from experience. Use these techniques, okay? I had $18 in one, and that is a lot, okay? So, yeah, so everything that I'm telling you guys is going to help you in the long run. Sometimes you do have to be a little bit firm in your tone of voice. Um, I think a lot of people in general, when they see me, they're like, oh, she's so sweet. I can get over her. And sometimes they have to say, pop, pop, stop right there. This is what we're going to do. So sometimes you have to be assertive. You are the teacher. Now you don't need to be yelling at them at a screaming match, all that. But you do need to say your expectation. This is how it's going to go. If you keep doing this, you're not going to play with this toy, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, so pretty much everything that I'm telling you guys in this video, it will help you in the long run. And I hope this video will help you guys. Um, I think I have two more tips. So let's go ahead and go over that. All right, number nine. Ask for help when needed. Um, sometimes I still struggle with this because I have it. Or when you are a strong teacher or strong personality in general, people think, oh, you already got it. Like, you're the strong friend in the group. People assume that you already have it. But sometimes the strong teacher that you're watching needs help as well. That's why I said previously, 
don't wait jump in nobody needs to tell you what to do you read the job description you see what's going on help out if you see a student spill something on the floor don't tell me susie who's the lead teacher oh johnny spilled something you go get those paper towels and you help johnny with that spill something you have to jump in so ask for help when needed if you see another teacher that needs help help her as well um if you see her patting another child down for a nap you go ahead and clean up the classroom or help another child that's screaming and calm them down okay so all this is teamwork which goes to my last tip teamwork makes the dream work you guys want to have a clear understanding of respect in the classroom um i know in general no matter what workplace that you work in what field you're in you're going to have some minor level of drama or misunderstanding amongst that. You want to avoid that at all costs. It is so unnecessary. It creates a horrible work environment. So that's why I said, don't wait, jump in. Make sure you're on time. Make sure you are doing your job duties. You would like to be an asset to the classroom. You want to be seen as the teacher. Of course, be fun, be silly, be yourself. But you would like to be a team mate, a team player, okay? So this is pretty much the end of this video. I can't remember what steps I am, I am on now, but I hope all of these tips and um, advice help you guys um, during your first day of working in childcare. Even if you have been doing this for a while, some of these tips that you can readjust in your classroom. So I hope this video has helped you guys. And I'll touch you guys in my next video. Bye!